Oh, sorry. This really isn't as bad as it looks. That's ridiculous. All right, I know it looks bad, but please don't tell the other ladies. Well, you wouldn't know it yet, but our mailman can be a little absent-minded. I have some important real estate documents that I was expecting days ago. Yes, that's it. You didn't open it, did you? I can't believe this. Don't you have any respect for other people's things? Well, whatever. Just promise not to tell anyone about this, okay? And in the future, you should probably treat other people's stuff better. Welcome to your garden, your own little plant sanctuary. button helps keep track of how well you're taking care of your character. The four needs of your character are composure, happiness, social, and appearance. Click on various objects to see which actions will fulfill which needs. Welcome to your kitchen.
Hey, honey, that smells really good. Sorry to scare you. We just got home. It was as busy as can be. There is so much work to do setting up the new office here. I really underestimated how much. Patient files that have to be updated and organized. New computers to network together. Luckily, I found a new assistant to help out around the office. I'd love to hear about your day, honey, but I'm really hungry. Is dinner almost ready? Thanks. I look forward to... Oh, uh, Mom, this doesn't taste as good as your normal cooking. That is no way to speak to your mother, young man. I'm sure he didn't mean it. Did you have a bad day at your new school? I don't really want to talk about it. Can I be excused? That's ridiculous! First you forced me to move to this stupid place, now you won't let me leave the dinner table. Fine. What do you want to know? Have you met anyone that you like at school yet? Most of them are total losers. There were a couple people that seemed pretty cool. Oh, really? Were any of them cute girls? Well, there is a teaching assistant that seems really helpful in my English class. Good. If you make friends with her, she might be able to improve your grades. So, can I go, or do I still have to serve some time? I need to meet my old friends online. I just don't know, dear. So anyway, how was your day? She seems like someone who will make an interesting neighbor. Well, you are a savvy lady. I'm sure you will deal with them appropriately. You really have had a long day, haven't you? I apologize for not letting you tell me about it earlier. Oh, there isn't much to tell. I'm not sure of her exact age, but I would guess around 30. Don't worry. I hired her because she had an impressive resume.
Thank you, honey. You two should meet sometime. Ah, uh, I don't think I could eat another bite. Oh? Oh, what a nice idea. I'll meet you up there. Sometimes, the stars align and two people hit it off immediately. Other times, only time will tell whom will prove to be a friend. And who will reveal themselves to be a worthy adversary. The most successful families are the ones that work together to achieve their goals. Of course, even the best-run households have the occasional kink or two to work out. But the truth is that no matter how well things seem to come together in a family, appearances can be deceiving. And when it comes to friends and neighbors, Appearances often have precious little to do with the reality of what's going on behind closed doors. We just wanted to stop by and welcome you to the neighborhood. Oh, absolutely. I'm Daniel and this is my twin brother, Frank. We just like getting to know our new neighbors, don't we, Frank? Of course we do. Oh, well, I made my fortune, if you could call it that, in the fashion industry. Perhaps you've heard of me, Daniel Fox? Well, it's nice to see that someone around here has good taste. You wouldn't believe what I saw that Edie Brick character stepping out of the house in just the other day. Actually, I run my own business. Maybe you should show her what you do. Frank is starting up an internet-based networking company. He can set up the computers in your home for you. For free, of course. That is assuming that it's all right with you. Is it? Okay, there's one right over there. I'll start with that one. So, now that Frank's off working his magic, we can chat a little bit until he finishes. What do you think of your new neighbors? Mm-hmm. Listen, sweetie. Let me tell you something about our little neighborhood. You will never die of boredom. There is always something going on. That facade will quickly fade. Trust me. Within a week, you'll have plenty of stories to tell me. No. Oh. There's so much to tell, too little time. Well, did you notice how Susan Mayer was acting this afternoon? She was running around like a chicken with its head cut off, flipping over chairs in her backyard and on the porch. She seemed pretty freaked out. She must have lost something important. All right, I'm all done with that one. Are there any others you need set up? Yeah, Frank can be a little coarse at times, but he means well, so you get used to it after a while.
He was in the military so long, I think he got used to barking orders at people. After he finished his service, he landed a job in the city, but he wasn't happy there. So we decided to get a place together out here in the suburbs. There's no special reason for why I'm here, really. Sorry to disappoint you. I guess you could say I just needed to take a break from the fashion industry. It was like a big party that never stopped. But sometimes, you really need it to stop. Yes, it did get awfully hectic at times. It looks like your sun system is already set up. And that system of his is top of the line. Dual processors, two gigs of RAM, the works. Oh, is that so? I've set up the browser for you with a tutorial and a bookmarked homepage. When you start the browser for the first time, you'll be directed through the tutorial. If you're already familiar with the internet, it should be like riding a bike. But give the tutorial a shot anyhow. To skip the tutorial, just click the Skip Tutorial button. And that's that. You're all set up. You're welcome. Well, it was an absolute pleasure meeting you. Hello. Oh, I'm feeling sick to my stomach. You'd feel ill too if you were a man and knew what you were capable of. Men can be so weak and disgusting. It makes my stomach turn just thinking about it. Let's just say that I learned what men are capable of a long, long time ago. It's not even worth discussing. Besides, it's really embarrassing and rather personal. Thanks anyway. Maybe another day. Thanks. going on So hey, hey, tell me something. Hello. You remember when I told you that I felt disgusted by what men are capable of? I don't want you to think I'm crazy. My feelings stem from something that happened to me. Something I'm having a difficult time forgetting. Can I ask you a personal question? Do you see your husband as weak? Maybe even disgusting or depraved sometimes? I mean in a sexual way.
Maybe I'm generalizing too much. I don't know. I'm so ashamed. I can't bring myself to discuss it yet. Thanks. I Hello. I have something to tell you. It's a secret. Can I trust you with my secret? Nobody else knows about this, except for my brother Daniel. Remember when I told you that I learned about a man's true nature a long time ago? Well, I learned it from a man, one man in particular, from my childhood. It happened when Daniel and I were just kids. I don't know why, but we had come home early that day. We didn't think anyone was home until we heard my dad's voice coming from my parents' bedroom. I remember that it sounded like an animal was thrashing around in there. Anyway, we pushed the door open a bit, and there he was. My naked father forcing himself onto this woman, and that woman wasn't my mother. It was really shocking. My father showed me how weak and disgusting men could be. What other excuse is there to cheat on my mother? Okay. You're right. You are so right. I'm glad that I overcame the fear and embarrassment and spoke to you. I really opened myself up to you, and you proved that you could be trusted. Right again, friend. Remember, double-clicking on the house icons on your mini-map will allow you to instantly travel to that location, helping you to get around quickly and easily. Note that the red X icon on your minimap will help guide you towards completing your current goal.
Hello. Why is that? Well, what would you like to know about me? Why do you ask that question? Don't lie to me. What do you know? Who sent you? I'm sorry. I have some unpaid bills from my last residence, and and I've had collectors calling me lately. Well, as you can imagine, I I'm embarrassed about this, and would rather not discuss it. Oh, it's not your fault. Hello. I'm still embarrassed about our last conversation. I shouldn't have become so defensive. Maybe we could start over. Is there something else you'd like to know about me? That's not funny. Who sent you? This conversation is over. Hello. I'm embarrassed by the way I have treated you, and I'm deciding whether or not to tell you my secret. You probably think I'm a nut job for the way I've acted lately. If I told you my secret, you'd probably understand my behavior as of late a bit more clearly. But I'm afraid that you'll think less of me. If I divulge my secret, will it stay between us? Well, the reason I'm so defensive about my past is that I've been trying to run away from it for years. You must understand that I'm being followed by hundreds of people. When I was hired at a fertility clinic in the town where I last lived, I began switching samples from the sperm bank with my own. Eventually, my seed was planted in every woman who came to the clinic, not that of the chosen donors or husbands. People began growing suspicious when hundreds of children conceived at the clinic started to grow up and bore a striking resemblance to me. That's when I knew I had to pack up and leave town quietly. I'm sure you think I'm a dreadful person for doing what I did. I couldn't agree with you more. That's how I thought of the situation too. So it's good to hear someone I like say the same thing. All of this running had almost broken me, but you just managed to put most of my pieces back together. Thank you. And you're not just a customer. Of course, 
You know what that means. more? You gotta listen to this. Hi, how have you been? It's nothing. Just thinking about a few things in the past I should have handled differently. I was rummaging through my attic and I found my old college yearbooks. I was looking at the faces of my old college friends, ones that I've lost touch with, and it made me... A little sad. You know, it's funny, I, I hadn't even thought about her in years. My best friend in college, we had something of a falling out. not talk about it right now. I've already opened that wound today. It's kind of raw, so if it's okay with you, I'd rather wait until the bleeding stops before I talk about it. Thanks. Hi. How have you been? Can you keep a secret? I'm not gonna name names, but... Someone on Wisteria Lane is having an affair. Do you want to know what I think of people who cheat? I don't tolerate anyone who manipulates, deceives, or tricks other people to get what they want. Cheating not only destroys marriages, but it is destructive to the very foundation of all relationships. Yes, cheating ended the best friendship I ever had. I don't want to discuss it. It's really not that important to me anymore. Thanks. I might take you up on that offer. Hi. How have you been? Yes, I do. You're very perceptive. Do you have a minute? Remember when I told you that I lost my best friend in college? And that it was her cheating that destroyed our friendship? giving a lot of thought to that situation, and I was wrong. I destroyed that friendship. What I did was worse than cheating. I snitched. I betrayed her confidence. I can't believe I'm telling you this, but here goes. I found out that my best friend was cheating on her exams, so I turned her in. I thought she'd get a slap on the wrist, but it was bad. 
She got kicked out of school, her reputation was ruined, and I lost her as a friend. If I had just kept my mouth shut and minded my own business, none of it would have happened. Go ahead. You know, I've been beating myself up for years about this, but you're absolutely right. I shouldn't feel guilty about doing the right thing. She was the one who was doing something wrong, not me. You've really helped me through this. You're a great friend. You've no idea how grateful I am. And I'm very lucky to have you as a friend. Hey, you remember me, right? Lynette Scavo? Listen, this is gonna sound odd, but have you gotten to hang out with Susan Meyer at all? I mean, how well do you know her? Okay, good. Glad you like her, because I'm going to give you the chance to know her a lot better. <laughs> Let's just say that one of her paintings somehow came into my possession, and I just wanted to return it to her. <laughs> Let's just say that my boy sort of borrowed it <laughs> from Susan's home without asking her. Oh, I don't know. Stole is such a negative word. It's not like we're gonna keep it. So let's just stick with borrowed. I can do that part myself. I just wanted you to help me out. Trust me, it's simple. I'll make sure to keep an eye out, and you can slip in and return Susan's painting. So, give a girl a break. Will you help me out? Come on, you should be aware. I won't take no for an answer. Yeah, they don't call me a shark in the boardroom for nothing. Great. I promise I'll make it up to you.
at 7 p.m. Your guests will be arriving any minute. The house is immaculate. The caviar is chilled. The wine is comfortably breathing in hand-blown carafes. There's only one problem. You forgot to buy fuel for the farm. What are you doing in my house? You are a doll. Thanks for being so concerned. But the next time you hear crying when the kids aren't supposed to be home, it's probably just Tom mourning the loss of his manhood. Goodbye. a preventable hazard once you try
spawning the salmon. They are a school of voracious piranha. This is a preventable hazard. Once you trigger it, click on the puddle to keep yourself from falling down and making noise. This is a preventable hazard. Once you trigger it, click on the puddle to keep yourself from falling down and making noise.
I can't thank you enough. I knew I could count on you, neighbor. Anytime you need anything, you let me know. As a small token of my appreciation, I'd like to give you this gift card. It's good at any store at the shopping center. Thank you. 